What a stroke of luck, everybody. There, a beautiful leopard. I think it's Karula. I'm just going to have a look. Haven't we just got here? Looks like her. Pretty much where we were going to come and check. I just was about to turn north before we got this far. That's her. Hello, Queen, Your Majesty. Mom. That's a real stroke of luck, everyone, isn't it? Now, leopards do like to drink for a little while, as do the lions. I'm just going to see if we can get around the other side so we can get a nice picture of her with her face lapping up that rather disgusting water in which many catfish have been. You know, a stunned animal, an animal stunned by lights. How's that, Eggsy? And there is the Queen enjoying her afternoon tea. Marbs. Oh. Exhibit we're not on blurry safaris. And just eggs is the um is the ambient sound up. Because you can actually hear her lapping away. You can hear the Okay, we can turn it down again, Eggs. I think it was just the wind. I just wanted you to hear that. amazes me how long they drink for. I've seen a leopard sit and drink for 15 minutes. That's beautiful. Now, many of you would have been on drive with Brent yesterday evening, with Nkanyeni, and you can see the difference in their colour. Pale lineage. Is Karula's is the royal's lineage. Much more honey coloured than gold. Oh, she's not going to drink for 15 minutes. She's going to go straight behind us. got that slight dewlap. Slight dewlap being the bit of skin that hangs off her chest but she doesn't have a saggy belly anymore and that's because her cubs have stopped suckling of course. They stopped suckling for some time now. Let's just ease our way around. I think she's going to go back south I'm afraid. That's okay. That's maybe she's got a kill around here. And maybe Hosanna and Shwongile also are here. Them bushes. Oh, hang on. What's she doing in there? Let's just watch down there in the bush. I thought maybe she'd stashed something. She doesn't appear to have stashed anything in there. She comes, all goes. <laughs> Let's carry on. She doesn't look like she's eaten either in the last little while. And thank you all for your screenshots. She really is looking rather splendid in this light. Yeah, I think she's got something down south. 
She's heading back south towards the boundary. Well, now she's just sitting, so let's just wait here a second. She's adopted what I like to term the Pooh Bear stance. Contemplating. Heaving camera, cannot find focus. I'm going to blame the camera. There we are. And Michelle in New Jersey, you say, is this treehouse dam? No, this is twin dams. I possibly should have told you that, but this is twin dams. Uh, twin dams is on the right on the southern boundary, you see. And let me just sneak past here. I'm going to ease down here with her. Because I think she's going to cross. Let's just go actually around the bushes here. Hold on there, Eggsy. Don't fall off. Your career is budding. You've barely started. It would be a tragedy were you to become a casualty of my poor driving. Many have survived, so should you. There she is. Oh, she's looking so regal at the moment. Oh, she's going to go south. Sorry, everyone. Um, I'm in two minds. Oh, we're going to have to follow her this way, I'm afraid. Shamel, you say she's far from her usual territory? No, not at all, Shamel. She's in her usual territory. This is where she would normally be. I can try and draw you a picture, if you like, just now. It will be a terrible picture, but I can try. Right, enjoy this, everybody. This is going to be the last we see of her. She's coming, going to go south. Go ahead, Brent. Sorry, go again. Yeah, she's about to just cross here. Go for it. That's just Brent saying, can he come past, of course. Look at her. I wonder what she's spotted. I mean, Brent could also come into the sighting, of course, because there are only two people here. She's sitting nicely now. There's Brent. Look at that little, look at that little um, tail flicking from side to side, telling the birds um, that she's no threat to them, trying to avoid them, alarm calling at her. There are a couple of drongos in front of her who've definitely been watching her. She's seen something else in this bush here. And I don't think, I don't think she's eaten for a while. So there you can see a nice angle from Brent's car. And I don't think that she has eaten for a while, and I wonder if she hasn't spotted anything here. But she is sitting right out in the open. So what it is she's seen, she may have seen something enormous, like a buffalo, for example, in which case she'd, you know, she'd watch it and look longingly and hungrily towards it. Where are her little ones? They're somewhere to the south of us. You know, it's so interesting that, um, Shamel, maybe your comment is coming from the fact that before she had her babies, she didn't spend that much time around here. She spent much more of her time to the north and to the east of where we are now. But since she's had those two youngsters, this road has formed the kind of focal point of where she's kept them. In fact, they were born on this, not quite on this road, but she kept them when they were very little on this road. And I think it's quite interesting that she's chosen 
to kind of keep them one half this side of the road and one half the other. And I'm not really sure why that should have been. She's listening and smelling. Of course the wind is making her sense of smell not particularly effective here because it's blowing from behind her. Hello Abigail, you're in Thailand. How wonderful to hear all the way from Thailand. You want to know how far leopards will travel from their cubs? Well, quite far when their cubs are eight months old. Their cubs are nearly eight months old. They will, well, they're sort of seven and a half. And she will happily travel sort of, um, I don't know how many kilometers, let's say at least four or five kilometers from them, sometimes even a little bit more. And 12 kilometers, for those of you operating in the imperial system, is roughly seven miles. Seven and a half miles. But I mean, I've seen her leave when those little things, I mean, there were those tiny little, when they were little, probably only about two months old. And when they were two months old, she walked all the way from around here into Biffle's Hook and back down towards them. And that was, I mean, that was a march of some, you know, it was probably a march of some 10 kilometers as the crow flies. So that's quite far. But these days, you know, with them eight months old, she'll happily leave them for an extended period. <laughs> Eggy, very, very astute question from, from you. You say, if Karula's cubs are no longer drinking milk, if they're not suckling, how are they getting enough water? Why wouldn't they accompany her to the water? Eggy, the two aspects of this question, I think the first is that I'm not sure that she came specifically to the water. I suspect she's been on the hunt. She certainly was this morning when Steph and Herbert and Eggsy were following her. And so she may have just passed the water and decided she needed a drink. And she's also expending, obviously, much more energy on a hot day than her cubs are because they'll be resting up somewhere. The second thing is that leopards are not dependent on water for their survival. They get sufficient water from their prey and desert leopards, desert adapted leopards, don't actually need to drink at all, and sometimes they never drink. So they will drink if they can, but there's no real need for them to drink. I've just spotted two cardinal woodpeckers, which I'm not going to ask Eggsy to try and film with that camera, but I wonder if she's not just doing a bit of birding at the moment. What do you think, Eggsy? What do you think her bird list is at? Do you think it's better than yours? Better than chicken, ostrich, and hornbill? And roller? You don't think she's seen a chicken? <laughs> I think you're probably right, Eggsy. I think a bird list is probably about 250, but given the fact that there are no chickens here, you've got one on her there. <laughs> That's wonderful. <laughs> Goodness, kitty, kitty, bang, bang, I don't know. You say, are there rosettes or spots on this leopard on her skin, or are they, are they on the individual hairs? Well, they come from the skin, obviously. There are different follicles on the skin for different coloured hairs, so I'm going to say, kitty, kitty, bang, bang, if you were to shave this leopard, and hopefully that will never happen to her, I suspect you would see markings that were very similar to those rosettes, and that would be brought about by the fact that, it would be brought about by the fact that, you know, that I assume the, the follicle of a black hair is a slightly different colour to the follicle of a blonde or honey coloured hair. That makes sense? I'm going to assume that you'd see that in the skin. But I couldn't tell you for sure. Very good question. 
that's the joy of this job. You see, you keep getting asked questions you don't know the answer to, and then you have to go and find out. Or, if you're really lucky, someone at the other end will tell you the answer to the question that you don't know. There. Listen. Can you hear that? There's a... Yeah. The tail flicking. She started flicking her tail. You see, she opened her mouth as... A rattling cesticula started to call, and she started to flick that tail even more. You say it's very distracting, reader, to see her flick her tail like that. I think that's the whole idea. Not that it distracts us, but much more that it distracts... Um, much more that it distracts the birds. very kind thing of her to just stop here and sit and wait rather than crossing to the south. <laughs> X-Ranger you say, if the Queen of Juma was to bestow a knighthood on me, I would be Sir James of what? I think that would have to be up to her, you know. I'm not sure what it would be. Sir James of the DRC. <laughs> Sir James of Kenton-on-Sea, perhaps. I just hopefully not Sir James. I just hope it's not Sir James of Wendy or Rusty. That would be insulting. What was that, Kirsten? I think Kirsten had some kind of... Ah, Sir James, the laxative of the bush, said Kirsten. Kirsten, a laxative is not a place. However true that might be, it's not a place. It could be Sir James of the Midden, though. Sir James of the Dung Pile. Sir James of the Scat. That would work, much as I would hate for it to be the case. <laughs> wonder what it would be for Eggsy. <laughs> Eggsy of the hen hutch. I've taken about 75 pictures of her doing exactly the same thing, so I think I'll stop myself now taking further pictures of her doing the same thing. I'm just rather fascinated by why she's sitting here. I don't really understand why it is. We're about to be passed by a cheetah-coloured van. It's going to be very exciting, everybody. You won't see it, don't worry. We'll keep it on Karula. We are, unfortunately, on one of the main access routes, and this poor chap is trying to get his guests into a sighting. Not into a sighting, into a, a lodge. And this, of course, was this strange thing that Karula did, was to keep them under culvert on this, on this road for... A few months in a very strange place. Because there's so much activity. Hello Rachel, you're a new viewer, it's great to hear from you and obviously one of the things that you don't, Exe, there's an elephant behind you there, see there. Just sitting in the bush, we'll go back to the cat. Rachel, you're wondering about whether or not a hungry leopard like this might pose some kind of threat to us. And the answer, Exe, uh, not Exe, <laughs> Rachel, is no, she doesn't see us as prey. There goes the lovely cheetah-coloured uh, van. Let's go back to the leopard. 
And so, Rachel, we're totally safe over here. I have heard, of course, of leopards, and I've seen leopards charge vehicles before. I've had a leopard leap onto my car before, but that was not because he was hungry. It was because he was angry with some wild dogs. They just don't see us as something to eat, you know. They just see the vehicle as a normal part of the day, and their immediate reaction, if they do feel threatened, is to run away. It's not to approach us. Well, she is just sitting in the most regal way. So, Rachel, and the same thing with the lions. Uh, they behave in precisely the same way. Sometimes you feel a little bit threatened by them, but even on foot, Rachel, if I was to get out of the car and she was ravenously hungry, her first reaction would be to run away from me. It wouldn't be to come anywhere near us. Now, I'm not sure how long we're going to be able to sit here for. Oh, there, look, 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 she's running. Sorry, I thought you were about to miss her, nail something behind you. <laughs> Go for it. She started running. She stopped again. Look, 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 look. She's stalking everybody. There she goes. She's definitely spotted something in there. Look how flat she is. Oh, she's going south into the reserve. South of us. We can't see what she's looking at because there's a... A vehicle parked just in front of her. And I don't want to start the engine. Let's just be very quiet. You see something? There we go. Now let's see what she's looking at. Now here you can see the amazing coloration that a leopard has for this time of year. It's perfect. Look at that. You wouldn't see that if you came walking past here and she'll flatten herself against the ground if she sees something. She's definitely spotted something. You saw the way she moved across the road there. I, I'm staring into the bush now. I cannot see anything that she might be looking at. Station approaching sighting at Twin Dams. I think we're going to have to leave everybody. No, we're not. That person's gone the other way. Excellent. We'll stay here. The next person to leave will have to be us, I'm afraid, because we've been watching her for quite a while now. I'm scouring into the bush to see anything in there. I can see a drongo that's been there the whole time watching her. For some reason, not alarm calling. Uh, you mean you can track leopards by the alarm calls that drongos give sometimes. So I think we'll just sit very quietly here and see what transpires. <laughs> and Katya, you make such a great point. You say she looks more liquid than solid when she's stalking. Absolutely she does. Here she goes, everyone. She looks very liquid indeed. As my sister used to say, I think cats are so bendy. And they are so bendy. Right, everyone, I think we're probably going to have to leave the sighting. She is on the reserve to the south of us. There's another vehicle approaching, which means they're going to take charge of the sighting because she is south of us. But let's watch her go. I'm not affecting her at all by sitting here. Well, just see what she does. But we might have to leave soon, so I, I do apologise. But there's now we can do. Can you still see her, Eggsy?
I can't see her, but the people in front of us can. And so I don't th think she's disappeared. Hmm. All right, everybody, there are now four vehicles in the sighting. So we're going to pull out. We've had a wonderful view. And it's just a much better view idea that she isn't pressured at all by all of us. What a fantastic sighting. Uh, whatever she manages to kill there, I hope she brings it back this way. There she is. You can just have one last look at her and then we'll pull out. Beautiful. Okay. Wonderful stuff.